Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of our refugee series. There is a cut here. Uh, this is a me recording after the fact to let you know what's going on. So I recorded episode 28 and 29, and they are terrible. Um, I was dealing with a lot in my personal life, which you probably know from watching my channel update videos, but um, I didn't know what was going on with my family. I knew that they were at the hospital, and I was very concerned. And I thought recording would make me feel better, so I started recording uh, to take my mind off of things that were going on. Problem is, every time I'm in a really bad place and I record, then the content comes out more or less unusable. At the time, it seemed perfectly fine, and I thought it was even good that I got some work done. In hindsight, um, starting in episode 27, which is what the last video that you saw on the channel, um, I was really kind of irritable, really negative about like the refugee center. In the next episode, I continued talking to NPCs at the Refugee Center. We started trying to do some of their quests, specifically clearing out a hijacked convoy, but I just kind of lost it and was just so terrible uh, and unhappy and miserable. And then the following episode, I drove back to our base and we just kind of settled in. We killed some zombies for looking for 223 ammunition, and that was really where we left it. So... That is what happened. I'm going to cut both of those episodes, so we're going to just jump ahead. I'm going to rename the episode to episode 28 or whatever it's supposed to be, but we're not where we left off, and honestly, I'm not probably going to go back to the refugee center. So I think we did pick up a quest or two that we may do eventually, but for the most part, I'm not going back there. You're just going to have to accept that. I know a lot of people want me to play more with NPCs, but really, they just irritate me. And between that and me having a real bad time in my personal life, those two episodes are not salvageable. So from here, we will just continue playing as we do. I've already recorded three more episodes, so you know the, that's what you're going to see from here moving forward. But we did lose a chunk of time, and I felt like I needed to add this to the beginning of the video so that you would understand what we're doing. I'm going to try to cut this in with the other videos so that there's as little overlap as possible, but we're just going to jump cut right into the episode. So... Everyone, thanks so much for um, accepting this. You know, if you want to hit the thumbs down button, that's fine. You know, I totally get that. But uh, yeah, we're just going to move forward and pretend that stuff never happened. And um, yeah, sometimes I really struggle and it's hard to focus. And I always feel like if I just do something, you know, like in my darkest moments, internet, I still always have hope, like some little kernel of hope in my mind. We, we ate all our beans, right? No, we have a lot of dried beans. Let's let's make some beans. Component bean. Cooked beans. Pretty boring. Make some beans. How many portions? One per thing? Okay. I always think it'll make me feel better, you know, to, to record. And in the moment, it does. It gives me something to focus on. But then I end up with a video that's like super depressing and I don't really like uploading that. I don't like that being on my channel all the time. I know we do trend towards dark topics. I know a lot of you even respond very well to those things uh, because, you know, it's not an uncommon story. You know, mental illness is a, is a very common issue for people, both my own mental illness and my brother's, you know, so people are generally pretty interested in what I have to say about it. Chicken, what are you doing here? Why are you here? Chicken. Okay. I'm going to eat this chicken. I'm going to eat this chicken. Shouldn't have come here, chicken. Just corral it into a corner. Um, I don't know if they'll dart past you. It vanished. Oh, it's behind the fridge tile. Just murder. Sorry, chicken. Shouldn't have been here, man. We could continue raising, like, survival, which, which we haven't raised at all, which would increase our butchery yields, but it's generally not that significant. Did we splatter any meat around? We didn't. Somehow the meat, the blood got into the wall there. Why don't we cook these scraps of meat for a snack later? More calories. So, what do we do? I would like to go out and loot... I think looting would be more entertaining than sitting here raising our skills. What we really want are to find some books. I think they're brown tiles are libraries and bookstores. Is the furniture store. We can just search for them. Library. No. Book. There is a bookstore, but it's very far away. Like much farther than I feel comfortable traveling. 
What are these? Botanical gardens and a zoo. The zoo would have some significant monster density as well as zombie animals. So I'm not crazy about that. Plus it's next to a pool, which means it's just jam-packed with enemies. We're not going to go over there. Too many places in Cataclysm have the very high monster density, which kind of ruins the area around them because the zombie zombies just sort of permeate out in a radius around those locations. I guess we could just go hit some houses. I mean, we did clear out the zombies here, so these houses should be opened up more or less, but this park is concerning. <sighs> Let's just go for a walk and get something done. Don't I have a cart somewhere? Didn't I make a crappy cart? I did. Hello, cart. And take this out with us. We can take the book. It's not a big deal. Anyway, I know people, you know, kind of positively respond for the most part to those content uh, things where I talk about my mental illness and my brother's issues and family stuff. But, you know, I try, I've been trying to keep them separate. I've been trying to make blog type videos instead of making, just putting it in my Cataclysm content. Because I do pretty, pretty frequently get comments where people are like, hey man, I'm here to watch Cataclysm. Would you stop talking about this? Uh, for the most part, my audience seems to be on board for it. I have essentially trained you to expect this, right? I've, I've basically taught you from the moment you started watching my content that these are the sort of things I talk about. But there are always people who are like, I'm just here for the game. I really don't like your commentary. Um, and that's always kind of hurtful. And honestly, those people don't mean that much to me. Like, honestly, if you're just showing up for the content, I probably don't really want you as a viewer anyway. Like my main focus is to get people to like me, like who I am as a person, uh, because then those are the people who come back. Like, let's say you, you come to my channel and you just want to watch Cataclysm. That's great. You know, I get a couple of views, you know, whatever. Once I monetize, you know, that's a little bit of money in my pocket for every person who shows up, that kind of thing. I mean, not really. It's a fraction of a penny, but you know what I mean? So, like, that's great and all, um, but the people who come back every day, they're not the people who are just here for the game. The people who come back every day are the people who are here for me as a person. You know, we've talked about this. It's a little inside baseball, as uh, Northern Lion would say, uh, you know, how the sausage gets made, that sort of thing, behind the scenes with YouTube. But YouTube is, is a big hobby of mine, so, you know, it's something that comes up from time to time. And I just think that if you want to have longevity on YouTube, there are really only two ways to do that. One, you can make really like viral, high tier content that really draws people in. That's not really me. I'm not a very good editor. I'm not that clever. You know, <laughs> that's not really the kind of content that I make. And then the other way is to be relational. So like, um, you know, you can either make really viral content. Like what's that, that Minecraft Hunter series kind of popped off there for a while. That kid like a year ago, what's his name? dream like a year ago he didn't even have a youtube channel he's only been around for like a year now he has like 23 million subscribers or something like that huge numbers actually i have no idea don't quote me on that but like he he came from nothing started making some minecraft hunter style videos where he's being hunted while he speed runs and he popped off to the point where that kid's probably like a millionaire at this point like just from a year's worth of stuff then it's because his content was really watchable. Like, I watched a lot of those. I don't even like Minecraft, but I actually thought that was a really enjoyable series. And I guess there's some controversy now where they say he's cheated in a speedrun. I haven't really been following the news, although I do like speedrunning, so I probably will look into it at some point. But that kid made, like, really viral content. So, like, you know, he popped off and became this huge thing on YouTube. Um, and that's one way to do it. And then the other way to do it is like building a relationship with your audience, having people come back day after day, not because of what you're playing, but because of the person that you are and the fact that they enjoy who you are as a person. And in my opinion, that's the superior thing anyway. Like, yes, would it be nice to have, you know, a few million subscribers or whatever? Absolutely. How many of you are there? Three. We really can't run because of the dogs. So we'll just hoof it around the building and hopefully kind of take them one at a time. Okay. And the spear is enough to kill the dogs a lot of times in one hit, so we should be okay. Just peek around. There is another Rottweiler. Doesn't seem to be aware of us. Let's draw that attention. I would rather kill it now than 
have it pop up when we're trying to do stuff. Hello, pupper. Anything else? No, not pulped corpses. First of all, clear that filter. And check, okay, up by the building. So we should be okay to pulp and rest. Uh, yeah, and then the other thing is, as a gaming channel, you know, I don't want really people who are just here for one game because I like to play other games. And if people are only here for Cataclysm, well, then they're not going to watch my other content uh, because they're only here to watch Cataclysm. Which is what I've noticed largely during my channel is that people really don't watch other videos. Um, people really only do watch... I mean, people have been watching the vlog style videos, which surprises me a bit because I would have thought... I mean, I guess they do deal with a very serious, like... How often do you hear a YouTuber talking about, like, their family really openly about, like, mental health and, you know, the, the fear and the, the, the concern over someone who's very sick, you know, with mental illness? And you don't hear about those things a lot. So I guess it does kind of make sense that people would respond well to that because it is something that's not common. Like, people just do not talk about mental illness uh, ever. You know, like I'm still, I remember growing up, if you said you were seeing a psychiatrist, people treated you like there was something seriously wrong with you that you had to be going to a psych. Mm -hmm. And now it's, it's, it's getting much better in the world, you know, where people can talk a little bit more openly, but you still don't hear about it. Like, honestly, you know, it comes up in movies and stuff. Sometimes it's really rare, even in like movies or television for people to speak honestly and openly about mental illness and mental health treatment, which is part of the reason why it's such a big issue is because we stigmatize it. And it's like, you know, there's nothing wrong with struggling, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking your medication and talking to someone who's a professional, you know. Um, so I guess people probably just are responding to that. But in general, my other my other content doesn't get a huge amount of attention. And I think that the people who do watch that stuff, so like I played, I mean, 20, 2020, I played quite a few different games, you know, and there were a lot of them that had like nine views a video. Whereas if I post this Cataclysm video, for example, odds are good I'm going to get, I don't know, 80 views on the first day or two, um, which is obviously much better than, you know, nine views over the course of a week or two. So, you know, I don't know. And the people who do stick around and watch other content, they're the people who are here for me because they don't, it doesn't matter what game I'm playing. Really hate cockroaches, man. Take me upstairs. I don't want to deal with this. See what all comes upstairs here. Now kill the scary one first. We'll kill the little ones just because we want to get them out of the way so we can maneuver here. Hello, fat zombie. We're just going to stand here and tank a lot of these. Okay, go ahead and back off, apply a bandage to our bleeding. Never mind, we stopped bleeding. Oh, it was red when I exited this menu. Does it turn pass when I exit this menu? 7.53? No, so why did it blink off? Whatever. Anyway, that's enough talk about YouTube stuff. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better today by the way, uh, in case you can't tell just by my voice being a lot more chipper than what it usually is. Hello, zombies. God, there's just a basement full of zombies. Uh, and we are fighting them upstairs just because if we fight them downstairs, zombie soldier, uh, I don't really have the damage to get through your armor. Let's kite this one. Firefighter zombie. Same thing, kind of, but we can better deal with that. I really do hate, like, this comes up all the time, I know, but why is there just a basement full of zombies? You know, it just doesn't really make sense. Like, why, we killed what, like, four, five of them? There's three more that just came up the stairs. Why is there eight people in a basement? You know, like, we're going to get down there. It would make sense kind of like if it were fortified or... You know, maybe people retreated there during the apocalypse to kind of shelter in place. But like once we get down there, it's just going to be like big open nothingness. And it's going to be like, well, why are these people down there without food stores or without barricading the doors? That kind of thing. So I just wish like people thought about the story behind it instead of just dumping like monsters on a location. Like the parks we talk about all the time. 
you know, it's fine if you want to put, like, literally last time I can remember seeing a park, we counted, what, 49 child zombies or something like that? And it's just like, if you apply some rational thought to it, why would there be kids alone in a park during the apocalypse? If you want to put a bunch of zombies, oh no, are we weary? We are. So we the combat might be made all that more difficult by the fact that we're getting weary. I didn't even think about that. I thought we spent all of yesterday just reading. So here, you know, we're on about 10 or 11 zombies in that basement. If you want to put 10 or 11 zombies in a basement, that's totally fine. Just apply some logic to the story behind it. Just put, like, empty plastic bottles down there and empty food containers. And, uh, you know, put uh, a bunch of furniture towards the stairs as though they had barricaded it. You know, that sort of thing. Um, just to, to make that location that instead of just being a miserable location that doesn't make sense, you can turn it into a story, you know, which is what I really, really like about Cataclysm is when there are stories behind the things that people do, uh, and make in the game and things like that. So same with the parks, just scatter a bunch of empty gallon jugs around, put up some tents in the park and just say, Okay, well, this was a location where people sheltered, you know, as an emergency refuge. And then they all died. And now there's just a park packed with enemies. Like, that makes perfect sense. You know, it's a story. Freaking roaches, man. You still there? You are still there. I don't know. You know, and I know I'm prone to complaining. But, like, I think that's a totally valid complaint. Like, there shouldn't just be 49 children... <laughs> In a base, in a, in a park, you know, alone in a park. Why? Why are they in a park? So, anyway, let's kill this. I don't know where the soldier zombie got to. We really should just go home because we are weary. I would like to kill all the roaches, if possible. I'm running out of stam from fighting for so, so long. I mean, so what? We've already seen like 11, <laughs> 11 zombies and a whole bunch of roaches. So this is the roach. Okay, so there's another roach down yonder. Attempt to push past. Yes. Just more, more enemies. Another zombie soldier. It may be the same one that just retreated downstairs. I'm not sure. What is this indicator? It's like a red heart with white on it. Um... Looks like two T's maybe. What what does that denote? Is it because I oh am I bleeding? Oh, I am my head is bleeding. Go ahead and put a bandage on your head. Yes. Okay, let's step out here. Man, it's weird playing zoomed in when I'm so used to not being zoomed in. Okay, just any second now we'll hit the hit the roaches. Um, so this is the cockroach basement. Um there's usually not really anything down there anyway. It's just some tools, I think. Um, and I mean, this place is just covered in gore. Let's just leave. We really shouldn't even be fighting. We are weary, you know, and there's really nothing down there. But like, you know, it's just annoying. <laughs> I'm annoyed by this. Let's apply some bandages. We didn't really get much stuff. Yeah, I keep seeing that bat wing zombie. I don't really know what that is. I can't remember ever fighting one. So I would like to not deal with that if possible. Or at least not um, get surprised by it. What do we want to do? What's to our south? Some houses, a cemetery, and a garage. Garage would be nice. We might be able to find some extra batteries for our, our welder. But again, we are getting weary we're not super injured. Why don't we poke over there to the garage? Let's draw the attention of these zombies. There's quite a few of them over there. Again, we're getting close to that park, so that's probably connected to that. Let's get a question. I've been rambling a little bit. Let's find ourselves a question. Uh, what makes you cry? Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, lots of things. I'm... Um, uh, generally a pretty in touch with my emotions kind of guy. Lots of things make me cry. I'm not like a super big crybaby. I, I don't spend a lot of time crying, but there are certain things that, you know, hit me, you know, just the right way or the wrong way. Like, um, sometimes my mental health stuff, when I talk about 
my mental health issues. Look at this sprite. That is a bat wing zombie. So it looks like their arms merged into the wings. It's not like a, uh, you know, a zombie with arms and wings. Zombies' arms have stretched far beyond human limits. The skin lengthened into a gruesome, fleshy membrane. Mutation does not suit it well. It moves clumsily even compared to other zombies. Okay, maybe it falls down a lot. I'm not sure what that means exactly. That's a cool sprite, though. I like that. So we'll kill the Batwing zombie. Looks like, yeah, they have a leap ability. So maybe they can't fly proper, but they can kind of use their wings to leap forward. Uh, leap is a pretty common ability for creatures in Cataclysm. Uh, the cougar does it. Lots of uh, the, the zombie predators do it. Or the, uh, maybe not zombie predator. What's the middle one? Hunters. Hunters do it, I think. Okay. Batwing zombie. Sure. Another another chicken. Why don't we eat some of our... Oh, did I drop my meat by accident? My scraps of meat. Get items. Meat. Oh, where did my scraps of meat go? Did I eat those? Oh, I bet they're on the table back at base. We should remember that because they'll probably spoil. If we don't remember them. Quite a lot of enemies, including a shocker. This garage is just packed. Again, raises the question, like, why? Why the garage? Um, but okay, we're going to back off. I really don't want to fight just a horde of zombies to get into a garage. It's not worth my time, really. We can see basic gas station crap. Uh, beauty magazine's not going to do much for me. Some snacks. Yeah, I mean, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth the, the horde that we would have to go through. Again, just, just you know, why why in a garage would there be a huge ama amount of people? I think part of it, too, is that Cataclysm doesn't really... Um, I don't think people focus on the lore as much as they should. Like, if we could just really cement, like, hey, the zombie apocalypse, it took this many days from start to finish. This is how kind of people reacted. Then we would have a better understanding of, like, where the zombies would be why they would be there, you know, what the government response was. So, like, where did people congregate right before the apocalypse? And then we could just, you know, focus on monster density based on that. I mean, obviously, they still migrate, but, like, it would provide so much more sense to the apocalypse. Um, one of my main... Like, I know it comes up all the time, but it's, like, legit one of my only major complaints with Cataclysm is the... Uh, random smattering of monster density that just seems like sometimes people just paint locations but anyway um so like making me cry i mean sometimes it's mental illness stuff like um last wednesday i had an appointment with my 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 therapist and we uh we were talking and we were talking about um i i mentioned how i make to-do lists for myself so that i can kind of stay on track and take care of things um and I was explaining to her what my to-do list looks like. And I basically, my to-do lists are always just really basic human things. Like, hey, make sure you eat something today. Make sure you bathe. You do your self-care. You know, stuff that is important that I often neglect because I don't value myself very much. Uh, and because a lot of times I just don't think about these things. Is there not scraps of meat here? Scraps of meat. Eat them. Eat them for calories. Mm, we should just go to bed. I don't think we need to bandage our wounds or anything. Let's just go to bed. Sounds fine. Right, how's our temperature? We're actually cold. Am I not wearing my clothes? Did something get destroyed? No, I'm wearing my clothes. Why am I cold? My mouth is cold. My head is cold. Everything else is just mildly chilly. Why am I so... Maybe just from being out and about? We could put on a balaclava. That would help our our face. Uh, but would reduce our stamina. Uh, the hard hat. Yeah, I mean... Let's just go to sleep. I did buy... I did get a uh, army helmet somewhere. Which I think I was supposed to wash and, uh, and put on. But the hard hat is fine. And we were talking about uh, just, you know, basic to-do lists. And I was telling her, like, most of it is just self-care stuff because I don't take care of myself. And just the simple act of sharing that with another human being and saying it out loud, like, that I'm not taking care of myself and that I'm gradually getting worse. I just 
started crying a little bit. Like I teared up, you know, you feel the burn in your sinuses and you're like, oh crap, I'm about to cry. And then you feel like you have to apologize, even though it's your doctor basically. And it's literally their job to listen to you as you deal with things. And still embarrassing, you know? Um, so sometimes stuff like that, um, sometimes a song will hit me in the wrong way or, or at the wrong time. Like there are some songs that I tear up over basically every time I hear them. Uh, what's that song? Uh, walking in Memphis. <laughs> it's such a weird, it's a song about, uh, you know, going down to visit like Graceland and stuff. If I recall correctly, I don't even know all the words, but there's a line in it. Uh, like basically there's this lady who plays piano at a church. They take him to see her and, uh, he sings for them and she asks him if he's a Christian and he says, you know, tonight I am like, ma'am, I am tonight. And something about that line, like just this kind of like nun basically asking you like, are you a Christian and, and singing? And it just hits me in a weird way. And it tears me up a lot of the time. I don't, I have no idea why I don't even like the song very much. Like I said, I only, I don't even know most of the words. Something about that line, every time I hear it, I'm like, oh, geez, I feel it. It hits me in the feels, you know? Christian music does that to me as well. Like, that's not a Christian song, but like, Christian music does that to me sometimes. Um, there's a song, it's super famous. Like, I hate the song. It's called I Can Only Imagine. And it's like, I hate that song. It's way too popular. I hate popular things. It, it was played all the time, every. Back when I was in the church, everybody knew the song. It was so popular. And uh, like, I hate that song, but there's just something about that guy talking about standing in front of God and like, what would I do if I'm standing in front of God? Am I going to collapse to my knees? Like, am I going to praise him? Like, what am I going to do? And there's something about that imagery that just tears me up inside. Cause like, I don't know something, I'm sure it's connected to like, my concept of like judgment and, and, you know, whether you're a good person or not, when you stand before God, that sort of thing. Something about that song. It hits me every time. What is an urban city block? I'm curious about what that is. We might head over there and we should check out the outdoorsman shop. We checked the sporting goods, but we didn't check the outdoorsman shop. Problem is it's right next to the bank, but we've cleared this area a fair bit. So we might actually be able to get over there safely. It would give us something to do. Let's do that. And we're not weary anymore. We are hot now, of course, because why wouldn't we be? And it's evening time, so it might get dark while we're out and about, but that's okay. So that hits me. Uh, sometimes movies get me. Uh, stories get me. There's um, So I mentioned The Dresden Files recently. It's a book series by Jim Butcher. It's like modern. He's a private investigator, but he's also like a wizard, and it's got vampires and stuff in it. Very good book series. Highly recommend. I'm currently listening to it right now. In fact, I'm on book seven uh, or audio book seven or whatever. Uh, and I've, of course, I've read them all multiple times there. But it's probably my favorite modern book series. But in that, there's a character who is literally like the hand of God. Like he um, basically has like a special sword and it's kind of like connected to the Christian God. And he's like a good Christian guy and... They fight evil and all this stuff. But sometimes in the stories, he'll get into like a big fight and like he'll just start spouting Latin. Like he'll pray to God like to protect him and he'll just start spouting Latin while he fights with a sword. And there's just something about that that hits me as well and gets me very like choked up. I don't know. You, you can probably tell already. A lot of my stuff is connected to like religion. Uh... And it's just because I have a complicated relationship with religion. And sometimes I, like, I'm not a Christian. I, do, I wouldn't say at this point in my life that I'm a Christian. I don't really agree with a lot of the, like, belief system of Christianity. But it, you know, was something I was involved with for a time. And I have complicated feelings, you know, much like a lot of people who get out of, uh, you know, a religion, uh, or practice as a child or whatever, their parents make them go. And then they get older, you have complicated feelings about it, you know? 
So sometimes it's it's a lot of stuff connected to religion, but it's other stuff as well. Like things that are, it, it's not even religion. It's my belief system that it's connected to. So like there's this, oh, hello, tough zombie. Why are there, why are you, why are there so many of you here? What is this building? No, this is not a house. What is this? Oh, is this the outdoorsman shop? It is. Okay. Let's, um, I mean, again, I don't know why there's like, eight of you in a outdoorsman shop, but okay, let's hop the fence here. Nine of you, 10, 11 of you. Why, why do they do this? You know, like honestly, honestly, who throws a shoe? Um, so it's not even religion, it's just belief systems. So like there's this movie called Hacksaw Ridge and uh, there's gonna be a mild spoiler, I guess. I don't know, it's an older, it's been out for like probably 10 years. I don't know when that movie came out. Uh, well, let's just avoid spoilers. But basically, there's this guy. And for him, it is a religious thing. Like, he he's a Christian or whatever. I don't remember. It's a huge plot point in the movie, like his belief system. I don't remember what it was. But um, he's in a position, basically, to save a bunch of people's lives. And the guy repeatedly lays down his own safety... And just saves people. Like, that's his whole thing, is that he just keeps throwing himself on the line to protect the people around him. Um, definitely, the movie is not that great. I don't like the movie very much. But the ending, where, like, he's actually in a situation where he's just repeatedly laying down his life for other people. And he keeps saying, like, just let me get one more. Like, just let me save one more person. Uh, and he just keeps going back up there over and over Hands, his hands are bloody from like, you know, working on these people. He's he's constantly in danger, and it's like there's something that really moves me about a person who repeatedly lays down their own life in protection of others. Because like, and it again, it's it's clearly tied to my identity, right? My my whole identity. If you ask me to explain it, I wouldn't say this out loud because I I think people would judge me. But in my head, I would think. My whole story of my life is that I was a bad person who has changed into a good person. So that's my journey. That's my arc. That's what I've been, you know, over the last 10 years, gradually becoming a better and better human being. And so, like, there's no greater thing in my mind than to, you know, put yourself in danger to protect other people. Like, there's no greater thing that I could do with my life. Like, if I died but i died saving a guy from a burning building or whatever that would be fine because that's like the ultimate redemption like the ultimate illustration that you are changed and better than you used to be so whenever i read a story about someone who does something selfless or you know this is like the hacksaw ridge was based on a true story that guy really did over and over lay down his life to try you know, put himself at risk over and over to save people. And I just, something about that, you know, really moves me. Um, like I said, didn't even like the movie that much. The movie's very focused on his religion and like, like they didn't want to let him in the army and stuff. So like, that's the main bulk of the story. But uh, when it actually gets to crunch time and he's like fighting to save people, it's really very moving uh, for me. So I don't know if other people have those feelings but I don't know there's something about fighting the good fight and and doing the right thing that speaks to me because that's all I really want from my life now is to be able to say that I've made good decisions and I've you know I'm, I do the right thing you know is so important to me man there were like no kidding there's like 14 zombies we killed in here it's just kind of bonkers one Four, five, six, seven. Uh, there's three in here. Eight. I don't know. There's just a lot of them. <laughs> just gets gets old, you know, to constantly do the same thing. I really should have made a crowbar. I keep finding these crates, and I'm never actually looting them. Uh, definitely will take the tea, take the water, the sports drink, take cranberry juice, clean water. Sure, we'll take some clean water. Everything else can stay. Um, and we should really call the episode. We'll we'll come back and we'll loot this in the next episode. Anyway, sorry again. I'm feeling real weird with my personal life, so I'm in a kind of weird spot. 
I didn't mean to talk about religion either. I know some people get turned off by that, but like, you know, it was an important thing to me once upon a time. I wasn't living a good life, but you know, the Christian belief system is in line with my own in a lot of ways. I definitely disagree on some major points with Christianity and I don't know that I believe the whole actual like, you know, belief system of like Jesus and God and, you know, dying for your sins and all that stuff. So I have a complicated relation with Christianity. I'm not in any way judging people who do or don't believe those things. You know, you're entitled to believe whatever you want. And you certainly should not look to a random guy on YouTube for <laughs> advice on what you should believe. So just ignore me. Um, but anyway, that's enough of that. Let's, uh, let's just change the topic. Everybody, thanks for watching. Hopefully you had a good time. I'll be back with more Cataclysm in the near future, of course. And I'll see you next time.